I want to share a message that God has been putting on my heart for probably six to nine months. A lot of times you feel a pull or a call to something, but you don't know fully what it is, or you even begin to just start walking out things God's speaking, but you're not really sure how to get there. And also you sometimes feel the warfare. Anybody know what I mean? The things trying to push you back. And you realize there's a battle for something going on right now. So many times when I was in Kenya or here and praying through things, God's been speaking something. And when I was in this last trip to Kenya, God made it very clear what he was speaking so that I could begin to bring to you a word of the Lord. Now I bring this to you and I would say to you in the many years, the 25 years of leading, there's only a few times that you bring such a word. And so I pray that we have ears to hear and eyes to see. Amen. The, the question we've been discussing in this series is how do you make a difference with your life? And if I was to ask you, what do you really think the key to you making a difference is? Most people think about their qualities, their personality type. Like I'm good. I'm really, you know, charming or I'm really intellectual or I really have, you know, a, an ability to do this. I serve people and try to help support them. And we think about our communication ability or our style or our approach as the key to what really, how we really make a difference with someone. And I've thought that too through the years. I have a gift to communicate. I have a desire to teach, like my mind is always going, how do I get a hold of what the Bible's talking there? What does it take to really let that become a reality? So I love to think that way. I can see kind of deeply inside myself and I can see in other people. So I felt like that's my way to make a difference. So many times I would sit there, if I'm gonna have a meeting with someone or go to a, a group to lead, I'm trying to think about my words. How do I say it? What illustration do I use? How do I get through their doubts or their fears? And I'm thinking about my abilities. And I would do that with preaching. Many times I had trouble going to sleep at night because I'm thinking about how to communicate what the, the sense I have the Lord wants me to bring. And so I'm going through all of that, hoping that that will make a difference. And I have to be honest with you, in the beginning, I got discouraged a lot because I pictured messages where, you know, most of the congregation is being impacted and I'd see two people re seem to really like God did something. And I felt like, what am I doing wrong? And I think a lot of times we assume that it's our abilities that's the key factor in making a difference. But we have gifts and God wants to use them, but the power of us changing lives comes from God, not from us. He's the one that opens eyes for people to see. It's not me coming up with the perfect words that does that. The Ephesians chapter one, verses 19 and 20, it says, I pray that you'll understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This same mighty power has raised Christ from the dead and has seated him in a place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. It says that God has power that is exceedingly great. He's the one that opens eyes to see. He's the one that reveals truth that sets people free. He's the one that changes hearts. And I've begun to learn through the years that I'm not the key to making a difference my connection to God is the key. So it's not, my first job is not to preach, it's to pray. You hear me? It's not relying upon my ability. And it's so easy to rely upon our ability to get through our kids, to lead our group. And so God's really been driving something home to me. My first calling is not to preach, it is to pray. It's to humble myself and acknowledge that God's the only one that has the power to bring in those promises. God's the only one that has the power to set captives free, to open the eyes of people. And he even said to us, apart from me, you can do nothing. 
It's about being in me, abiding in me. And you see that. It wasn't Moses that parted the sea or Daniel that shut the mouths of the lions or Paul that turned the cities upside down. These were three people that walked in submission to God and they're seeking God. Moses was known as the most humble man. Daniel's a man that prayed even if they threatened death if he did. And you saw Paul was constantly before the Lord. I want you to look at Jesus's ministry. And you think of Jesus, he's the son of God, came down from heaven. When did he start his ministry? And you realize, look in Luke chapter three, verse 21, 22, and 23. It says, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. As he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son in whom I love. And with you, I am well pleased. Now, Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. How did Jesus begin his ministry? With preaching or prayer? Prayer. He began his ministry with prayer. And when he prayed, he got what he needed. The heavens opened. That means clear connection with God. Because you ever try to pray and there's a lot of stuff going on in your heart, in your mind, in your thought, you can't even focus But when the heavens open, there is a direct connection. The presence of God is flowing. My heart is easily open to him. It says, the father affirmed him. And I say this to you with all my heart. One word from God causes you to catch fire. One word from God gives you courage. If you don't have anything like a word from God, then you find yourself second guessing and struggling. And it says, then the Holy Spirit came upon him. It wasn't his gift alone. He needed the encounter with God. He needed the affirmation of the Father and he needed the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, our first calling is not to do whatever gift we have, it's to pray. Look what Jesus did after he's baptized. Where did he go? Come on, Bible readers. The wilderness. What did he do in the wilderness? He prayed and he fasted. It says in Luke 4, it said, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan, where he was baptized, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. For 40 days, he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry, I bet. Even after he'd been baptized, he's been affirmed by the Father, Jesus did not go start healing people or preaching to people. He went led by the Spirit to seek the Lord. And I want to show you something, because I really believe this. Anytime you're going for a breakthrough, you're also going to be fighting a battle, and God wants you to gain the victory in that battle so that you can carry the breakthrough he's going to bring. He goes in and has to deal with the enemy coming at him. And he stands and he goes through and now he's being strengthened by the power of God in this thing. He's seeking God, humbling himself, gaining understanding, overcoming the enemy, being strengthened. Jesus drew into the Father for those 40 days. And I don't know what all happened, but you know the Father enough to know he's preparing him. He's giving him the compassion he needs. He's giving him the sense of how to begin to deal with the battles he's going to face. He's beginning to lay strength underneath him so that when all the opposition comes, he will not shrink back. He's giving him the heart to see the people because when you don't see the people through God's eyes, you get weary with people. You get judgmental with people. You get... Uh, frustrated with them. But when you see them with God's eyes, you see people that are searching, but they have no shepherd. You see people that are broken and they need healing. Healing. You see people that are lost and they need a savior. Jesus returned in the power of the spirit after the wilderness. He goes to preach, but he comes in the power of God. And he comes in the compassion of God. He comes in the wisdom of God. He comes in the authority of God. And this is Jesus' pattern. He didn't just do that, all right, let me start my ministry. All right, I get baptized, I pray, I go 40 days fasting, pray. Now, no, his lifestyle. I mean, one of the common themes you see as you read the Gospels is what you see in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And raising, rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. There he prayed. Jesus knew where his power came from. Jesus knew 
where the strength to carry on came from being before the Lord. This is the way Jesus operated. And I love it. Jesus starts in prayer. Jesus carries all his ministry through prayer. I mean, there's times even he would go away. You remember then the disciples are struggling on the boat in the middle of the, of the Sea of Galilee and Jesus comes walking on the water out to see them. He'd been in prayer. What is Jesus at the end of his ministry? In the garden. What's he doing in the garden? Praying. Praying. What's he praying for? The strength to do what God's asking him. Not my will, Father. Let your will be done. To carry out the things of God, you will have darkness that tries to intimidate you. You'll have discouragement that tries to get you to sit down. You'll have fear that'll try to get you to shut your mouth. You'll have forces of hell that'll try to tell you you're not good enough and you can't do it. And where do you get the strength to overcome that? In the presence of God. Praying. It says in Luke 22, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives. His disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew from a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. And an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and he sweat was like drops of blood falling on the ground. He prayed himself into the place, give me the will to do exactly what you want me to do. And even on the cross that he's saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. See, our calling is to pray and then go do what he gifts he gave us to do. That's, many of us aren't being used because we don't pray. We don't, and so we don't have courage, we don't have faith, we don't have a, a step to take. We're just seated, waiting, God, you, you know, why isn't God using me? Because the place that you get used is before him in prayer. This, it, it, I, I'm saying this, this is, I'm saying, this is a word that I'm getting, bring, gonna bring into application, and I'm speaking to pastors, staff members, elders, board, growth group leaders, co-leaders, youth, children's ministry leaders, all of us, God is calling us saying, I want to do something greater than what you're doing right now. And I want to take you into a level you can't get unless you pray. If you look on at the first church, where did they begin? In a prayer meeting. 10 days they're praying. Jesus had given them the mission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. He gave them the mission, but he told them, don't go yet. Wait, what are they waiting? How are they waiting? They're praying. What are they waiting for? The power of the Holy Spirit. They're there praying. They're seeking God. They're beginning to be in his presence because they know we don't just go out and try to do what we saw Jesus do. We go in the presence of God, in the power of God. So they go out They've been three years with Jesus, but they watch where Jesus got his power from. So they go there, they pray 10 days, the Holy Spirit comes, they receive what they needed, and then God began to move. The fire of God came, the courage. So they're radically different than the disciples that you see in the Gospels. The disciples in Acts have courage, they have faith, they turn cities upside down. In the Gospels, they're like, how do you do that, Jesus? Why didn't it work for us? You look in Acts chapter 2, verse 40 and 41. With many words, he, Peter, warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. Around 3,000 people were added to their number that day. They prayed 10 days. They preached three minutes. 3,000 people got saved. We pray three minutes, preach 10 days, and three people get saved. Come on, amen. We think it's our talking, our doing that changes people, but it's our praying that opens doors that no man can open. See, there's something wrong with the way we're doing ministry. It's not Jesus' way. It's 
based upon human power. And human power can, does not have the power to change even our own life, let alone the life of another. We need to come back to the Lord. In the book of Acts, there's four big prayer meetings. There's Pentecost, when he first pours out his spirit. Then there's the time where they healed the, blo- the, the man at the gate. And then the Pharisees call him in and tell him, don't ever speak Jesus' name again. And they go back in Acts 4. Let me just read this, 20, starting in verse 29. Now the Lord, they said, now Lord, they're praying, consider their threats, enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal, to perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. You see this, they're being empowered to fulfill the call. They're going out. They're, they're, they had a some, don't speak his name. So they go back and say, God, thank you that we got to experience that, that we even got to suffer for your name. It's an honor to do that. Now we're asking you, we've seen that you have power, work through us in power. Do things through our lives that we have power. Give us courage that we do not back down. Another time they were praying because they had a call to go out into the world, but they didn't know how do we get to that higher place he's calling us? How do we open those doors? How does that begin? So they're fasting, they're praying in Acts 13. And what does he say to them? While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I've called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. This is when they began to take nations and turn nations upside down. This is when they became apostles that were going and planting churches all over the known world. God was calling them to something bigger. They didn't know how to get there, so they prayed, they fasted, and God opened doors, and God made a way, and then God backed them up all the way through. Amen. See, the Lord is calling us to something. For months, I felt, God, you're calling us to something. You're wanting. We even stood and told, this is a year of advancement. This is a year of growth. God's calling something. I'm in Kenya knowing God's calling something. He wants to do something. For 25 years, you can see the times when God calls you into a season. And when that season comes, if you respond, God takes you in a place you could never get yourself to. He takes you to a level you could never achieve. So the Holy Spirit was open. Seven times it talks about the Spirit being poured out in the book of Acts. All seven times was when it was a praying people the Spirit was poured upon. The connection between prayer and God doing his work is undeniable. In the history, I I didn't even plan to do, I was going to do this last week, but we had too many leaders gone to the Freedom Retreat, so I switched it and said, I'll do it this week, but it fell perfectly. I didn't even realize it. God is good. It fell on the anniversary where we talked about 25 years. Amen. There are three seasons where God called us into a protracted time of seeking him. I mean, some, one of them lasted two years, one, another one lasted three years, and another one lasted about a year. But in all of those times, If we responded, God took us into things that we would not, I mean, miracles happened. The first time is when we first started. We met for six months at John Young Elementary just praying. We did not have a a Sunday service. We just gathered together and prayed because we knew that we do not have what it takes to know how to start a church and make it successful. So we prayed. Within a few months of praying, we were given $2 million worth of land. We don't even have a Sunday service, and we were given a piece of land that was worth $2 million. (laughs) Only God could do that. We were looking for a place to meet. We went to Hunters Creek Elementary. The lady that was there told me, it will never happen. And we kept praying for another month or so. That lady was moved to another school. Another lady came in and she goes, I go to church. I love church. For sure we'll open this place for you. God was making a way. 
In that time, he gave the six promises. I had no burden to go to other nations. I had no desire what to bring if I even went to another nation. But God started talking about what he was going to do in the church he puts on this land. He was giving promises so we had things to go towards. I'm saying to you, friends, in that first season we were praying and God was doing things that only he could do. The next season came a few years later because the season ends and you carry out, you gather the fruit that God gives in that season. The next season came when I started getting a burden that wanted to know the God of the Bible, not the God of American culture. I started being so burdened. I want to know the God that Moses knew. I want to know the God that Daniel knew, that Elijah knew, that Paul knew. I, I know I went to seminary. I did all that. I, but the God of American culture, I'm not interested in anymore. I want to know the God of the Bible. And I said to people, if you want to do that with me, come out Monday night. We're going to seek the Lord. And God slowly, steadily started leading us to pray how to press in. We didn't even know how to press in, how to really take hold. We knew how to say prayers, but we didn't know how to see the heavens open and the presence of God come down. We didn't have any clue of that, but God was leading us. He was showing us there's things in our life. Let go. That's holding you back. That's hindering my presence. Let go. And he just kept going and going. Then God started opening up and giving us a message giving us something to take to nations. We even wrote books and took things and God opened up, I mean, city after city. We went to Baltimore, then we went to Houston, then we went to Chicago, then we were in uh, Cleveland, then we were in parts of Florida, various many cities all over Florida, and then Washington, D.C., New York City. He's opening up over 35 nations. This little church never thought anything like that, but the God of the Bible, because that's what he gave us the heart for, the God that can turn cities upside down. And he started moving and doing that. And we carried out and walked in that season. In fact, there was one year that I know we fasted over 100 days in that year. I, I was much thinner then. I, I, I think I was high school weight at that time. My point if you go and seek him when he's calling you, he will do what you've never been able to picture. You don't want to miss it. The third season was when we were transitioning out of the land in Meadowwoods. We were launching out a church. We were trying to go forward. We had no building. We were meeting finally at a, a Spanish church on OBT called Mission La Cosecha. We're meeting there. We don't even have a sign. And we're praying. 150 people. And God's telling us to believe him to build a building. 150 people got no business believing God can get enough money from them to build a building. But he did. We grew. We were at gas stations. We were doing things on Saturdays. We were growing, growing, growing. Then we came here and God, I mean, you talk to the board members, they will tell you, it is miraculous how God paid for this building. But all of them, we were called to go seek, to go seek, to go seek. Now, it's been maybe seven, eight years since we've been in a season that we started saying, God's saying it's time to raise the level of prayer. And I stand before you today and saying, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm telling you right now, God is speaking to us. It is time to raise the level of prayer. And he's calling us to begin to seek him because he wants to do something great. He wants to do something that we can't get to if we stay where we are. And so he's calling us to come, calling us. He's giving us the opportunity. When... I started going to nations. There were about three men that were invited to be a part of this, but two of them never made it because if you don't pray, you get stuck. If you don't pray, you get bogged down. If you don't seek the Lord, you don't know how to go forward. So this is what I'm asking. No matter where you are right now, raise the level of prayer. So let's personally, what does that mean? That means increase your personal prayer life. If you're praying haphazardly, you know, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't happen, establish a consistency. Make it a priority. Establish this in your life. Just say, I'm going to read 20 minutes of the Bible. I'm going to pray and worship for 20 minutes. I'm just going to establish this pattern. For others of you, 
you already have a consistency with God. So increase your time with God. Increase your focus of really beginning to go for God. Maybe you, maybe you read the word, maybe you don't. Like three parts of really seeking God, reading the word, saturating in the word, worshiping him, where your heart truly is in awe of him, and praying. Some of us only do one of them. Some of us do two of them. But I'm saying, if for you, then do all three and begin to build that firm foundation in your life. Increase, raise your level of prayer. Just where you are now, take a step to increase it. Can you hear me? Do this. If we all do this, we will see God beginning to stir. We will be in groups sharing stories. God showed me this. God spoke this. This passage really pierced into my heart. We will start seeing the activity of God moving in our midst. So I'm saying personally, let's increase and raise our level of prayer. Are you with me? Corporately, what do we do together? We are having a revival night. We usually fill this place up. Let's overflow this place. Let's come with expectation. Let's come saying, God, you're calling us. I don't usually go to those things, but you're calling us. I don't want to miss what you're doing. I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I want to be a part of what you're doing. We, we have Tuesday and Fridays. You go to our website. We have a Zoom link you can get on to come In the morning, before work, you can come and be a part of that prayer time online. You can do it that way. We have Thursday and Saturdays, prayer that goes on here in this building. Come and pray. On Tuesdays, before our Empower every other week, we're going to have prayer because we believe we don't just need to have a meeting. We need to have the presence of God. And Fridays, we have prayer in the evening, 6.30 to 8 p.m. You can be a part of that. Amen. One more thing, coming soon, we're going to have pre-service prayer before our Sunday services, and we're going to have 815 to 855 that we have prayer going on in here. Now, I'm just telling you, that's just to start moving. So don't miss the start. Don't miss the start. Because you can't fall behind time. And so as we go, I'm saying, let us begin to start moving because the Lord is calling and saying, it's time. I'm calling you into something greater. The only way you can get there is to begin to raise the level of prayer. Are you with me? Are you with me? I want to pray something. So let's just rise. Let's ask the worship team to come. Okay, I want to share something with you. It's very easy to hear something and not make a definite choice. So when you leave, you waver between two opinions. So right now, we want to ask God, give me the will to do your will. Give me the will that I give you a yes right now. I want to raise the level of prayer in my life. I want to raise the level of seeking you in my life. I don't want to go and Monday, ah, well, Jim, start tomorrow. The enemy loves tomorrow. No, we say today, Lord, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. So they're going to sing for just a moment and then I'm going to close us in prayer. But that moment is for you to step across and say, God, here am I. I choose to raise the level of prayer and seek you. I know you're calling for more. I mean, there's confirmation all around, all around the leaders. I know what God is saying. For months, this has been spoken and reverberating in our hearts. The the tension, the battle in the spiritual realm is so obvious. And God is saying, come. Come up here. Let me begin to open doors you've not been able to open. Let me begin to take you into the things that I, you know I'm wanting to do in your life. So let's make a decision right now. Lord, I'm going to seek you. I'm going to seek you. So worship team, just lead us for a moment. You pray. Choose the Lord with all your heart. Then I'll close us.
Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I live for you, Lord. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. show each of us how we can take a step to raise the level of prayer in our life ask the Lord God let me be clear on what you are telling me to do for first step I want to move with you I don't want to fall behind so God let me be clear and the answer is yes I want to go Jesus, give me the will to fully obey you. Give me the will to say no to what I need to say no to and to give myself to what I need to give myself to. Give me the grace because your grace is sufficient to meet my need. So God, I'm asking you for the grace to carve out time to pursue you like I did at first. God, give me as I take each step greater hunger, greater desire, greater release. God, move across your people here. Begin to do in us and through us more than we ever thought was possible. Bring courage in us. Bring faith in us. Bring love in us. release power through us Jesus Christ raise the level of prayer in our lives give us a heart to seek you and let us follow you each step and that you may begin to do far more than we even picture right now so just say to the Lord Lord I give myself to you raise the level of prayer in my life Raise the level of prayer in my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord right now. Just.